Now that this YouTube channel is back in the swing of things, I wanted to carry on where I left off with my Bleach volume reviews. And so we're going to look at Bleach Volume 65, Marching Out the Zombies. Before we begin though guys, I just want to say I'm really appreciative of all the support you've given me since I've returned. The subscriber numbers are going up and it's just awesome to see the channel building as we talk more and more about Bleach and the fan base in general gets more and more excited for the future of this franchise. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to hit that button now to stay on top of all the weekly Bleach videos we're producing and help support the channel as well. I'd super appreciate it. So, Marching Out the Zombies, just some general thoughts on this volume. It's a bit of a transitional volume, and sometimes you get these in Bleach, and oftentimes they're some of my favourite parts of the series. We've had a couple of volumes now, namely 63 and 64, that are essentially just fights. 63 is Renji vs Mask and Ruki vs Az, and almost the entirety of 64 is Kenpachi vs Gremi. Now things kind of change a bit in 65, and in these transitional periods between fights is when the plot moves the most in Bleach. And to be honest, they're probably some of the parts I enjoy the most. In Volume 65, Marching Out the Zombies, we do get some fights here and there. The volume opens with Ichigo tussling with the Femritters. But then a large portion of this volume is also dedicated to Ichigo chasing after Yuha, discovering Uryu, Yuha going up into the palace, and everything just starting to go a bit crazy. And it's a really fun read. So let's get into the nitty gritty of Volume 65. Starting with the cover, our cover character is another Sternritter, Sternritter Z Giselle Jewel. And you know what? I actually really approve of this volume cover choice. I think Giselle has easily the best design of all the Femritters. Um, I think people probably were surprised that Bambietta didn't get a cover, but I think that's due to Bambietta having a reduced role in comparison to what people thought she might have. But out of all the Femritters, Giselle is absolutely the one that deserves a cover, in my opinion. And I really like her pose, and I genuinely think that the artwork is fantastic. This is probably one of the volume covers that has the most personality in this arc. It's just a shame that once again it's kind of ruined by having this single block colour hue over the top of it. Giselle's is definitely not the worst offender. I mean there are covers like Kurge on number 56 that just look atrocious because of the colouring. But here it definitely would have looked better in her basic colours, plus we would have had a chance to see what she looked like in colour. I know she features on a colour page which actually appears in this volume, but this is a proper full body shot of the character and it would just would have been great to see in normal colours. Instead we have to settle for this kind of dark, almost purpley blue hue, which don't get me wrong, fits the character, but I just really don't see why Kubo started doing this in this arc and it kind of ruins some perfectly good covers. But aside from that, I really like the cover. I think the picture is great, the artwork is great, and the character deserves it. She plays a big role in this in this uh, volume. The poem for this volume is Love You to Death. Pretty simple, but kind of hits the nail on the head as far as Giselle's character goes. Obviously, this is the volume we discover that she has zombified Bambietta, and we get hints at their strange relationship, and I think Love You to Death is absolutely perfect for that. The all-stars are what you'd expect. You've got Kenpachi, you've got the rest of the Fem Ritters. It's interesting that Ichigo doesn't appear in this uh, set of all-stars, despite the fact that he does play quite a big role in this uh, volume. Considering Ichigo, they generally find a way to put him in the all-stars no matter what volume it is. It's definitely a strange omission. Another weird inclusion to the all-stars is Kenpachi. He literally shows up in this volume for one chapter and he's essentially charred and just lying on the floor, unable to move. Um, Ichigo literally saves his life and fights off the Femritters and then chases after Yuha. So I find that that's a bit weird, probably should have swapped the two of them around. Moving on to the content of this volume, and we get chapters 581, The Hero 2, to 591, Marching Out the Zombies 2. And like I said before, it's a pretty good read. There's quite a meaty amount of stuff to read in here because of the transitional nature of the volume. We get essentially two fights in this, in this volume. Like I said at the start, it's Ichigo versus the Femritters, and then at the end we get Muri and Nemu versus Giselle and Bambietta and her growing army of zombies. So I think if you were to just get this volume and read it, I think you would have a really good time. It's one of the better ones in the Thousand Year Blood Warlock, actually, because of that. Quite a lot happens, and I would say it's kind of... It depends, it depends entirely what you're after. For someone like me, who's a big fan of the characters in this series, and who wants more from his Bleach chapters than just fighting, and I obviously love a good fight in Bleach, but I love the chapters where the plot moves, and those volumes, because of the way Kubo paces out his manga, tend to kind of come in one go. So you'll get like volumes worth of fights, and then you get this one crazy volume where it's just plot happening for a lot of it, and those, they, they tend to be some of my favourites. So I really enjoy the content of volume 65. 
I think the fight between Ichigo and the Fenrit is, is, is pretty good. It's it's not really a fight so much as Ichigo just dunks on them the entire time. And to be honest, it's kind of like Ichigo's crowning moment in this arc. He doesn't really do anything after this <laughs> until the fight with Yuha. So if you like Ichigo, it's a pretty decent volume for you there. And then the fight with Miyuri and Giselle is also pretty good. The cliffhanger we get to finish off this volume is Zombie Hitsugaya showing up, which I think is pretty effective. Uh, if you hadn't already read the manga, you probably would think that he was dead. You know, I, and or, or at the very least that something really bad has happened and the Quincy's now have a captain on their side. I think it's a pretty effective way to end out the volume. And of course, when the next volume comes around, we're really going to start looking at the Royal Realm invasion. And that'll be really interesting to talk about as well. But in terms of the actual content for this volume, guys, I think it's pretty good. It's bookended by a couple of decent fights. And in the middle, we get all the crazy stuff with Yuha ascending to the Royal Palace, uh, beginning to fight the Royal Guards. You know, you get to see uh, Yuha start taking on Karinji in this volume um, and just all around a lot of crazy stuff. Because obviously Yuha getting to the palace was a pretty big deal back in the day when we were when we were reading it weekly, because obviously that's where Eisen wanted to get. And this villain has just done it so easily. So, yeah, and, you know, from that perspective, I think the volume delivers on pro plot progression, um, and it's just a really interesting read. We do get some pretty great individual character moments in this volume. Like I said, if you're a fan of Ichigo, you'll like this volume. He comes in, saves Kenpachi big time, and then he fights off eight stern ritters in what's a pretty great sequence. Then, of course, the rest of the Shinigami come in and help him out, and Ichigo faces down Uryu just as the Quincy's escape to the palace, and that, again is another really cool moment. Yuha getting to the palace, like I said, is great, but this is really only a taster of what's to come. It's the very, very start of that fight. We get Karinji's Shikai, Kinpika, and the eternal annoyance that comes with never finding out what it actually does. Um, but apart from that, things are really starting to heat up, and we've just got some great stuff coming. Miyuri bringing out the first part of his Kurotsuchi corpse unit with the, uh, with the Orankars coming back. Um, you know, if you were a big fan of Charlotte Coolhorn, I guess you'll like that part. <laughs> but I mean, other than that, you know, like I said, it's just a, it's a genuinely solid volume. Uh, if I had to rate it, I'd give it a solid eight out of 10. I think it's a really enjoyable read. It's quite a meaty volume. You know, some of the fight volumes can feel a bit bare bones, a bit thin on the ground. This volume, I don't think you have that problem at all. I think it's genuinely really enjoyable. And there's quite a lot to get out of here if you're a Bleach fan. That's it for this volume review, guys. I know it was quite, probably quite fast, but I want to get these volume reviews done because there's quite a lot to go and I'm interested to talk about them with you. So please let me know in the comments below if you've got volume 65, what do you think of it? How do you, what do you think of the volume itself, the content in it, the cover art and the all-stars and everything in between. Like I said, guys, as well, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to hit that button as well as the notification bell so you stay on top of all these videos that are coming out every week. And I'd really appreciate the support. I'm thinking of doing a giveaway when we hit a thousand subs. I'm not entirely sure on the logistics yet or anything like that because we're still quite a way away from a thousand. But if you could help us nudge us there, that would be really awesome. Until next time, guys. See you later.